The question of what to give people who've had a first dose of AstraZeneca and are due a second. And, uh, you know, some of the people who were young and vulnerable got AstraZeneca and then they were told, and I know one case, just a couple of days after they got the AstraZeneca, they were told, oh, don't give it to that age group at all. So what's to be done about people who've had one and are waiting for a second and it's kind of contraindicated even though I think AstraZeneca is absolutely fine yeah. um, they're saying it's you know, don't don't give it to this cohort I know it's, well, it's, it's really important for the over 60s but let's start with that because they're up in arms understandably and many contact me and say look and I, I agree with them they're waiting for their second shot and you were, the ridiculous situation where there's people over 60 not fully vaccinated who are at high risk of disease remember and the younger people have been fully vaccinated so they really need to move on this now, now you're right the mixing and matching the evidence grows all the time that that's a safe thing to do and a very efficacious thing to do. Two big studies, one in Spain, one in Germany, and we, we were discussing this last week, but more and more evidence. It was a fantastic study, but they looked at 26 people. Now, they were between under 46, this cohort. They got a fourfold stronger response if they mixed and matched than if they just gave one vaccine, you know. So there's the evidence you need that mixing and matching gives a much more powerful response. And we need the vulnerable to be protected. And if you're over 65, Pat, you've got a 15-fold increased risk of disease than if you're under that age, you see. And, and, and that's that group, mm. there's many not fully vaccinated. So the two options are push in the AstraZeneca second dose, of course, to the eight weeks. And they don't. that seems to be taking a bit of time to organise, I, I heard last night. Did you? It's strange. Or I think yeah. give them Pfizer because that's a very powerful vaccine and a very powerful combination. And, and, and they deserve it. They've had to wait, you know, and they're very vulnerable. So I think it's a really important thing that should be looked at. Now, you know, NIAC have been equivocating on this. Uh, I heard the um, the chief operating officer of the, the HSE saying, you know, when he was pressed with five five countries in Europe are doing this as well as yeah. Canada, of course. Uh, five countries are doing it. Ah, yes, but many other countries are not doing it. Well, you need a bit of guts, I suppose. I mean, this this age group want it. Give them the option. Why can't you, like, here's your, you can have a choice between Pfizer or AstraZeneca. Let them have a choice. And they, they may need to sign some waiver, I suppose. See, the trouble is, Pat, the, the trials are a bit small that mix and match and maybe there's a reluctance from that point of view. But it's so important now with the, with the Delta variant, Pat, remember, because that's a more serious variant. We know, mix, in that study I mentioned, the mix and match worked really well against Delta. They got a massive, good antibody response when they mixed and matched, you know. And the Delta's out there and there's a vulnerable group that aren't fully vaccinated. So now more than ever, NIAC need to be a bit more punchy, I would say, a bit more a bit more aggressive maybe. Now again, they must be looking, I think they are looking at it to give them a bit of credit. They are, they are looking closely at it because they want to make sure they do the right thing. But you're right, if five countries are doing it, why not us? That's the question I would have.